So now we're going to work through an example of a two-cubed replicated design. This is in an Excel file called replicated 2 cube designxlsx and we've got two replicates, so little n equals 2, k equals 3 because we have a two-cube design, so I've already named those variables. We've performed each treatment combination twice, and this is the data. I've already computed our sum in here, so this is just a sum of each of our replicates for each treatment combination, and also the variance. So the variance in each row is just the variance of those two replicates. And we're going to perform a statistical analysis using the uh, T statistic. First of all, we need to compute the contrasts. The contrasts are just the sum product of the columns here of our coded variables with the sum. And so we can just use sum product of our coded variables with the sum. And I'm going to press F4 to make that an absolute reference. So our contrast of A is equal to 146. And now I can copy this over because I've written that in terms of an absolute reference for column K. We can use this equation down here to compute the effect. The effect is given by the contrast divided by N divided by 2 raised to the K minus 1 power. And so that effect is 18.25. And again, I can copy this over. And so we've got all of our effects. Now we have to determine if those are significant, if they're significantly different from 0. Just like everything else we've been doing for statistics, we have to determine a standard error. So I have to calculate a standard error of the effect. Standard error of the effect is just a pooled variance. That's what sigma hat squared is down here, sigma e hat squared. The easiest thing to do to calculate that if you have equal number of replicates for each treatment combination, it's simply the average of the variances. So our standard error is just the square root of the average of our variances up here. So that's what our standard error is. So SE here is sigma hat. And the standard error of the effect is just equal to the square root of SE squared. So that standard error is named SE divided by N divided by 2 raised to the K minus 2. So this formula here is just standard error of the effect. Press Enter. And that's about 25. Now that we know standard error of the effect, which I've named SE effect, we can calculate our test statistics for each effect. It's just equal to the effect divided by the standard error of the effect. And if this is significant, our T value should be in the order of 1.5 to 2. And we'll calculate a P value here in a minute to determine if that's significant. But we can drag those over. We can determine the P value. Remember, we're comparing our test statistic to the t distribution with 2 to the k times n minus 1 degrees of freedom. That's the degrees of freedom for error. And so I'm just going to type in using the t.dist.2t function. Remember, our hypothesis is a two-tailed hypothesis. The first argument, and I'm going to put an absolute value because some of these are negative, and we want to only do this on the positive value. So we're going to do that as the x value in the t dot dist dot 2t function degrees of freedom 2 to the k times n minus 1 and when we do that we're getting a p value for effect a to be about 0.483 so that's not significant uh, in other words factor a does not bring anything to the response it has no effect on the response we can drag this over and now we can look at perhaps at an alpha value of 0.05 we can highlight the significant effects and so that means that B, C, and the interaction between A and C are significant. Sometimes you'll see this. Sometimes you'll see A is not significant, so the main effect of A is not significant, but a binary interaction between A and C is significant. This is what we would conclude. We would conclude that B, C, and A, C are significant. You can always calculate a regression model easily now once you have your effects uh, for a coded model. You would only include the significant terms. The coefficients in our model are related to the effects. You can just take the effect divided by 2, and the intercept is just the grand average of your experimental data. And I showed you how to do this in a previous screencast on the two-squared design. Now let's do the ANOVA approach. 
The ANOVA approach is very similar. I'm just going to copy and paste some of the things that we already calculated. So the sum, I'm going to just paste that over here. The contrast and the effects, I'm just going to copy those just to save time. Control C. Now we have to calculate SS of each effect. We can calculate SS by taking each contrast squared dividing by n times 2 to the k. So SS of a, for example, is contrast of a squared divided by n divided by 2 to the k. The sum squared of effect a is 1332. And I can just drag this over because I wrote this as a relative formula. MS of the effect then, remember each of the effects has a degree of freedom of 1. So this is actually pretty easy because I can just take SS of that effect and divide by 1. So we're essentially just replicating that. So that's the same thing. We need to compute a couple of other things here. In order for us to determine SSE, we first have to calculate SST using this equation. This is for a two cube design where A equals B equals C equals 2. Then we can subtract from SST, all of the other effects that we've already calculated up here, and that will give us SSE. Y dot 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 is just the grand sum. So this is just the sum of all of our data, and I can just do that, the sum of our sum column. So Y dot dot dot, and I've already named that Y dot dot dot. We can now compute SST using this equation here. That's the sum squared of all of our data points. That's all that means. We're summing over all values of A, B, and C, and all replicates. So all of those are 2 minus y dot 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 quantity squared divided by now A is 2, B is 2, C is 2, and N is 2. So this was really just dividing by 16. And we get about 134,000 as our total sum of squares. Now that we know SST, we can compute SSE, this equals SST, I've named that cell, minus the sum of all of our effects, sum of squares. So I can add all those together, subtract from SST, and that gives us SSE of 19,700. MSE is simply SSE, and we divide by 2 to the k times n minus 1. Again, you can get these ANOVA formulas for each design from different references. But we're going to divide by 2 to the k, divide by n minus 1, and we're getting a mean squared error of about 2463. Now we can compute our F statistics by taking the mean squared of the effect and dividing by MSE, mean squared error, to get our test statistics based upon the F distribution. We can pull this over. Now we need to determine if those are significant or not. We can use the f.dist.righttailed function on our test statistic with one numerator degree of freedom and our denominator degrees of freedom are 2 to the k times n minus 1, and we get a p-value of 0.483. Notice that the p-value of effect A that we got using the ANOVA approach here and the F distribution is exactly the same as what we got using the t distribution. Mathematically, these two approaches are identically the same. The only difference between our test statistic and the f distribution using ANOVA, the ANOVA approach is just the test statistic squared. So mathematically, everything is identical. And then we can pull this over. We can identify which ones are significant. And we come to the same conclusion, same p-values as we got before. So we would retain BC in the interaction effect AC. Those would be important in our model. Note that because we have an interaction effect between A and C, A is not significant. But if we wanted to create a mathematical model, in order to have the binary AC effect, we would have to collect data for A. So we couldn't just collect data for B and C. You still have to collect data for A. But in your model, you'd only be using A times C and not just A. So hopefully you learned a little bit more about higher order full factorial designs in this screencast. Thanks for watching.